Good afternoon to everyone who's part of FIDF, Friends of the IDF. Unfortunately, we're dealing with a very challenging situation in Israel. The situation now of Operation Shield and Arrow, the operation that started on Lagba Omer, where the IDF has to protect millions who are within rocket range of, unfortunately, the terrible rockets that are being the barrages, over 300 so far this morning, that have struck Israel, all parts of Israel from the Gaza Strip, from the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. And with us, our national director, Major General Nadav Padan, who's going to be sharing with us what is happening, the context of what is happening, who the players are, and what are the ramifications of this terrible situation. Major General Padan, if you could please start out sharing with us the difference between Palestinian Islamic Jihad and Hamas, and why it is that at this point, it is specifically PIJ that's attacking Israel and not Hamas. So they're both representatives of, of the Muslim Brotherhood at the Palestinian uh, Community Authority. Um, the Islamic Jihad are more radical, supported by Iran, by the way. And the Hamas is the one that actually control Gaza Strip so they have different kind of responsibility today. The, the initiator of this uh, uh, last uh, wave of terror that we're facing started with uh, an activist, a terrorist of, of the Islamic Jihad that's been captured and been in, in the Israeli jail and fastened to death about three weeks ago. That led to respond of, of uh, an accusation of, of the Islamic Jihad and, and respond that uh, uh, conclude over 100 rockets have been launched toward the cities of Israel, mostly the south part of the country. Israel didn't respond at the time and declared that it respond when, when it would be the right time for Israel. We waited, the IDF waited for the right time, and the right time were when the activists of, of the Islamic Jihad will move out of the shelters of their bunkers back to their regular life after, after a week. And we uh, actually uh, launch a very accurate surgical operation uh, two days ago, the night uh, of, of yesterday, um, that targets seven targets in Gaza Strip. Three of them were lay leaders uh, at the Islamic Jihad. One of them is the one that's responsible for the launching of the those 100 rockets had been launched two weeks ago. And the other four targets were uh, strategic storages of unique ammunition, like rocket, long range uh, uh, rocket and, and stuff like uh, that. The Islamic Jihad were in shock for, for almost uh, uh, two days. And they, they could not, you know, not respond. And they started up and launching rocket all over uh, the south of Israel, actually from the center of Israel, from the city of Tel Aviv and what we call the, the Dan region, the Gush Dan, uh, city of Rishon Lezion, Batyam, Holon, all the area of, of uh, this uh, Dan region, uh, till the Negev uh, Desert. So they cover all, most of the south part of Israel uh, and put Israel in shelters and, and stop, you know, uh, the daily uh, school routine, the, the work, the traffic, everything been freezed for the last uh, uh, few hours. They launched over 400 rockets. Um, some of them are with uh, heavy heads. Um, Israel actually tackled almost 100 rockets with, with our defense system. To mention, by the way, that not only Iron Dome participated in this operation uh, the last day, but also David Slim. David Slim is the middle range tackles that covered the gap between Iron Dome and the upper tier of Hero. So it's it's a system that developed uh, in Israel. It was actually a mutual development of Israel at the US for the last uh, five years. And it's the first time that we succeeded operating it uh, during the operation. It was, for from technology perspective, amazing uh, success of the system. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned, it's a, a hundred, around 100 records been tackled. When, you know, when you are uh, launching over a 400 rocket, we have to take in consider that 
the statistics said that around 2%, 1.8% of the missile were hit houses. And unfortunately, they've been able to hit a uh, house in a kibbutz, house in the road, and another a house in, in Ashkelon without injuries because all the South area are uh, in shelter, thank God. So uh, uh, I must say another thing before the next uh, answer, that operation of, of Islamic, of the Islamic Jihad actually use all the tool and all the skill they got in Gaza Strip. There is no, you know, like a, um, a rabbit that hide in a hat here in, 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 at the arsenal of, of uh, Islamic Jihad. What they have is, is anti-tank missile, long and middle range missile. They use it all, try to use it all during the last uh, uh, operation. The IDF in React launching attack after attack toward targets, military targets uh, in, in Gaza Strip, targeting Islamic Jihad and do all we can to avoid getting the Hamas organization into the operation. The idea is to fight Islamic Jihad surgically without getting the involvement of the Hamas. And like always, when the IDF uh, fight, we're doing every moral effort and every professional effort to avoid what we call a uh, collateral damage or uh, civilian casualties. So by the way, speaking about asymmetric situation, although we are the strong side, but, but there is in those kind of operation, different kind of asymmetric. From a value perspective, there is one side, they use his own population as, as human shield to try to launch a uh, missile toward the center of our civilian uh, center, the cities, try to get as much civilian casualties as he can. While the other side, the IDF, Israel, try to prevent as much as he can civilian injuries and do surgical, very accurate targeting job, uh, hitting only the Islamic Jihad military uh, target without damaging uh, civilian infrastructure and, uh, and, and civilians' uh, casualties. So there is different kind of asymmetric that we have to uh, uh, look uh, through those fil food, the asymmetric food filter and this uh, uh, operation. Major General Padan, two questions. The fact that Israel needed to use David Sling, what does that say, number one, about the capabilities of the rockets of Palestinian Islamic Jihad? Does it mean that now that they have more sophisticated, uh, more powerful rockets in terms of where they can go, trajectory, etc.? That's question number one. Question number two is, in terms of intelligence, what kind of a stockpile does PIJ have? What I'm really asking is, could this go on for another day or two? Or in theory, this could take this could last a week in terms of their stockpile and what they can use against Israel. So to your first question, uh, there is no very sophisticated uh, missiles or rocket, but there is a long range actually middle long range uh, missile that can hit Tel Aviv. And for those kind of missiles, we can use both uh, Iron Dome or David Slim. David Slim became operational a few months ago, and it was a, a good opportunity for the IDF to check it up. And they check it, uh, tackling with it, uh, uh, those uh, middle long range uh, missile. And as I mentioned, it works as far as I know so far. Uh, uh, better than the, everybody expected. To a second question about the depth or the ability of the Islamic Jihad, the Islamic Jihad, not like Hamas, doesn't have the energy depth for extended operation in Gaza Strip. So probably they are looking forward to end or get ceasefire as, as soon as possible, because as I mentioned, they have no hiding rabbit here. They already use all the skill and all the surprises uh, and now they start suffering from uh, the hits and and uh, and the operation uh, launched by the IDF, trying to uh, uh, end it or get to ceasefire as soon as possible. They they cannot do it, you know, by raising their hand and saying that they give up. They have to to find their own narrative, and and tell the story for their own people that they launched over three hundred. Uh, rocket and they have to tell the story also to 
to the Iranian that's supporting them and paying uh, over $70 million every year to support this uh, organization. And they have, you know, to pay the debt for, for the Iranian. So they have to create this story. But, you know, behind the, the narrative, the behind the story, the true uh, negotiation right now dealing with, with uh, ended from the, from, um, the Islamic Jihad perspective as soon as possible. From the IDF perspective, by the way, the, the operation already achieved its target by, by hitting those uh, three leaders at the very beginning. And Israel have no interest to, to extend the, the operation. So as far as I understand it, or as far as my assumption, without you know reading all the paper uh, for the last uh, few hours, I, I, I truly believe that it will end in 24 hours, maybe 48 hours, but it's not gonna be a long operation. At, at, as long as Hamas won't be part of it, if we'll do mistake and hit one of the Hamas or, uh, point or, or post, or, or Hamas will have casualties and, and it will be forced to, to react, that's gonna change the rule of the game. General Padan, could you share with us the connection between the PIJ in Judea and Samaria, where they've been perpetrating some terrible terrorist attacks, as well as the, in terms of that on one hand, their leadership in the Gaza Strip, which is responsible obviously for the rockets that are taking place as we speak right now. Is it one central authority? Is, is Iran pulling the strings? Do they have regional leadership? Could you explain to us that structure of PIJ and the and how it the connection is between Gaza and Judea and Samaria. So the, the Islamic Jihad, like Hamas, actually got triple heads. One in in Gaza Strip, one in in Judea and Samaria area, and the other one is outside. The outside uh, leadership is the one that's responsible for all the relations with Iran. Get, uh, collecting donation, getting support, coordinating thing with with uh, a group of Palestinian, a militant Palestinian outside uh, uh, Israel area, like we saw a few weeks ago with the launching of uh, those group from Lebanon toward Israel. Uh, in most cases, this part of uh, this triangle is the most radical one because it's not the one that pay and and you know have to look at the face of the people when they're under the, the attack of Israel. Um, the uh, two other uh, uh, heads of this triangle, Judea and Sumaria and Gaza, coordinate with each other, got some kind of local independency, but follow the, the agreement and the leadership of the movement as a whole. So there is structure and coordination each part of it got some kind of independency. They can, you know, act sometime without agreement or without following the spirit of the uh, organization because of local needs. But generally speaking, they are coordinating and try to um, uh, be on the same page. All the three had the outside leadership and the and Judea and Somalia and Gaza Strip. Between Hamas and the Islamic Jihad, there is different kind of tenses. They're having kind of love and hate uh, relation. From one end, they they're fighting each other for the hegemony and for leading the the, the Muslim Brotherhood uh, part of the Palestinian people, and it, uh, and on the other hand, they have like a mutual headquarters in, in Gaza Strip that they allow them to coordinate things. Uh, but as we can see uh, over the last uh, two days and uh, the last operation, uh, Hamas are not necessarily support the Islamic Jihad by all means, and in a way. Speaking about the first hand that we mentioned, enjoy the fact that that the Islamic Jihad suffering uh, from the from the attack of Israel, and they could you know extend their power over the the Palestinian uh, people in Gaza Strip, mainly when we're speaking about the last uh, few operations. The popularity of Hamas, both in Judea and Samaria, and in Gaza, I'm making an assumption, and please correct it if it's wrong their popularity is probably much more significant than Palestinian Islamic Jihad in terms Absolutely. of who they represent and who they who supports them in the populace. Absolutely. Hamas organization is a lot, a lot bigger and a lot stronger than the Islamic Jihad, by all means. 
budget, amount of activists, um, uh, the amount of ammunition and, and technology, that you cannot compel them. The, the, the Hamas is totally bigger organization. But when it comes to, to terror group, although the, 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 there is asymmetric relation between the two, um, uh, they can, you know, unstabilize and make a lot of damage in, in the ability of, of Hamas leading uh, Gaza Strip. So Hamas have to develop kind of more sophisticated relation with them, those love and hate relations that I mentioned. Although in described. terms of in terms of the sophistication of the rockets, you're saying the Hamas rockets are superior to the PIJ rockets that are being sent to Israel today? Um, more or less the same. By the way, the Islamic Jihad was the first one to have a long range or middle long, long range uh, missile before Hamas had it. Um, the, the amount of missiles are totally different. It's not the same skills. The Hamas have like 10 times double the missiles that the Islamic Jihad have. And, and, and from, from technology perspective, they are more or less the same kind of level of technology, having the same kind of ability. In terms of your personal experiences, you were a brigade commander, just uh, the envelope around the Gaza Strip. Later on, you served as the head of the Central Command. So you were dealing with Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad in Judea and Samaria. Your personal challenges as a commander, as a leader, dealing with them. Describe If you can describe to us some of their methodologies, some of the approaches they use amongst the population, some of their terror methodologies, and, and what, what are the challenges combating them? So both the Islamic Jihad and the Hamas are very religious uh, movement. Land uh, based on the ideology of, of the Muslim Brotherhood. So uh, the, their source or the, the, their habits of energy that through them that they spread all those ideas and ideology are the mosques. And the narrative, the story of the fight that they're uh, offering the people of uh, uh, the Palestinian Authority to adapt is kind of a religious war. Not like the Fatah, that have national declaration about uh, the state of Israel, not religious declaration. They're also Muslim, but the ideology of Fatah is a national ideology. The ideology of the Islamic Jihad and the Hamas are religious ideology. It's connected to the land. They uh, believe that the land are the lands of the Islamic people. They believe that that uh, Muslim that believe in the Quran and the Bible of the uh, Muslim cannot give up uh, Arab land. And Israel is part of the Arab land from that perspective. So their connection to the state of Israel are religious connected. That's why it, you cannot convince them. You cannot negotiate them. You can agree to have what we call uh, Udna. Udna is kind of ceasefire at the, at the Quran. We can have, you know, some kind of agreement about the level of friction, but we'll never, ever get one of those groups signing a paper that they give up the land, what they call in Arabic the Ard uh, uh, of Israel. So all the negotiations with them are based on, on temporary agreement that keep local or general ceasefire instead of trying to develop some kind of, of life together shoulder to shoulder. Thank you very much and thank you for your assessment. We just wanted to repeat that according to your assessment, if Hamas does not join in this war, if Hamas stays on the side the way that it has the first 48 hours, you see this lasting another at most 48 hours, another 24 to 48 hours. And you also shared with us that because their stockpiles are now somewhat depleted, um, they're really not in a position where they can have a long protracted missile attacks against Israel. Is that correct? I just want to make sure that we understood you. Yeah, it's correct. I, I, I would to be more, I mean, do not, do not get to very risky assumption. I would say that it's a question of day and not question of weeks. 
Thank you. Hours or days. In terms of some last remarks, General Padan, looking forward, meaning assuming that, that Hamas does not get involved, that they're not drawn into this, and that this, this is an issue of days and not weeks. It happens, we've, we've been living through this now for the last 15 years, where whether it's a matter of months, whether it's a matter of years, there's always a new, a new round where they send rockets and Israelis have to live in bomb shelters. Israelis cannot go to school, cannot go to work. There's PTSD that happens to many of the people who have been affected by these attacks. Um, where do you see this going in the mid range and the long range? Um, first of all, you, you have to understand that what we see at the news, it's only you know the tip of the iceberg of, of the operation and what's going on in the, in the IDF. When you see uh, uh, 100 or 80 uh, jets striking Gaza Strip, there is thousands and thousands of people, intelligence operator that you know sitting behind screens and 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 planning everything, and there is thousands thousands of of soldiers that getting ready for any development or getting uh, uh, ready to maneuver ground on the ground into a uh, Gaza Strip. So it's not only those um, a hundred pilots that we see on TV uh, that flying bravely over Gaza and attacking a uh, target, it's thousands and thousands of soldiers that right now getting ready, training, organize their gear to uh, be ready to maneuver into Gaza Strip if it's, if it's gonna be needed. And I, as I already mentioned, I, I, no, I don't believe up to the way that it's developed right now that it's, it's, it will, force Israel to have a, a ground maneuver. Um, speaking about, uh, about uh, uh, the strategy and, and, and um, a situation that uh, security situation of Israel from, yeah, let's say middle range uh, perspective, it's built on, on deter that we have to develop and deter is not only, you know, the, the thing that you are uh, telling to the media, is actually the thing that you're willing to do and you convince everybody in your very programmatic neighborhood that you are ready and willing to do it. To convince them you have to operate on a weekly basis, to show your ability, to show that you are ready to act, to show that uh, nothing block you. Uh, once they think that the political system or um, um, our relation with, with the US or with other are fragile and they, they see a crack in our in our system, they are trying us. So one bullet is to keep our deter at the right level. The second bullet is to keep develop intelligence and and launch uh, a special operation to uh, destroy the self-terror before they're ready to operate uh, toward Israel in Gaza Strip and in Judea and Somalia. So there is a kind of ongoing operation behind the scene that on one end deter and help the, the first bullet that I mentioned. And at the other end, it's it's block the or, or uh, limited the ability and the and the skills of, of the of our enemy, of the terrorists for uh, launching terror attack toward Israel. And the third one is to keep hope at the at the people of, of uh, that lives there. And help build on, on three things, stability, prosperity, and security. One of the things that, that, for example, uh, prevent Hamas from, from taking part of this operation is the fact that every morning, almost 20,000 workers from Gaza Strip crossing Erez checkpoint and work in Israel. Each one of them provide around 10,000 shekel. 10,000 shekel could, you know, make a living of 10 families in Gaza Street. So you can double those 10,000 in 10 and, um, and imagine what is the economic influence uh, and the influence of the, of the quality of life of the people in, in Gaza Strip. And as I mentioned, Hamas is a terror organization, but he's also responsible for Gaza. He's got his obligation and responsibility for the citizens of Gaza. Uh, so, those are the three uh, bullets that we have to still working on, uh, on. 
And there is no, as I mentioned, there is no magic. It's, it's, a, it's a really, truly tough neighborhood. We have, will have to keep this ongoing operation, ongoing fight. Our, our goal is to fight behind the scene, behind the radar, without the involvement of our civilian, without influence of our, our normal life and, and daily routine in Israel. As long as we are launching operation after operation every week, and, and it's done by our soldier and our, and our intelligence uh, uh, community, and it won't influence the daily life of the people of Sderot or of Ashkelon and this operation, the center of Israel, the people of Tel Aviv, that's, that's fine. And really, that's our life in Israel. We, we uh, picked very tough neighborhood for ourselves. Or God picked it for us. Well, thank God we have leaders like you and leaders of the IDF who are protecting us to be able to live and survive in that tough neighborhood. Where we'd like to close, I want to thank Major General Nadav Padan for the incredible analysis, for contextualizing and framing for us the issues at hand and what we're dealing with. The Army has asked us that for those Iron Dome units that are right now on hilltops, obviously places that, that they don't want the enemy knowing where they are, they're really out in the hot, hot sun of southern Israel. And there are a number of portable shades that get moved around on trucks that at least the soldiers who operate the Iron Domes in those various locations, some of them are in the desert, some of them are in the, the deep south of Israel, etc., where at least they can operate and function under shade. They have seating areas, they have shade areas, they have lounge areas. And unfortunately, this is our life and this is how they have to live, our soldiers who are protecting 9 million Israeli civilians right now and really are at the forefront of protecting humanity. So the army has asked us if it's possible in any way, shape or form, we're looking for your help to fund those shaded areas, those portable shaded areas that move together with the Iron Dome soldiers as they operate the batteries that protect the homeland, that protect the civilians of Israel. On behalf of the Friends of the IDF, we want to thank you for joining this briefing. We will be emailing the briefing with General Padan to the members of the FIDF family. And we ask you on behalf of the Army for your help, that basic needs and respite for the soldiers who are operating these positions during these very difficult times. Thank you.